today I found this notes in my phone that I had started for a video a long time ago. When did I make this note? Back in August, like early August. And it is lies that I tell. <laughs> okay, I'm a big liar, I guess. I didn't know that. I consider myself a pretty honest person. I lack the imagination to lie. But I came up with a little list, so I am a big liar. And we'll get into it. White lies. Just white lies. But first, you know we gotta take care of the channel. Let me take a little sip. My stomach is about to start growling too. So, apologize for that in advance. If you are new here, welcome to my nonsense. If you are old here, welcome back. Oh jeez. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. If you're old here, go double check, make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like. If you like, leave a comment be anything related to the video. It could just be a hello, a few emojis, anything as long as it's cool or respectful. Hit the notification bell and as always I will link my tip jars down in the description box. No pressure whatsoever but every dollar, every two dollars really helps. That's what allows me to continue to make content. I am your friendly neighborhood, YouTube neighborhood, ASMR server. And today we're serving up white lies. I don't see myself stopping any of these as I was glancing on the list. Like, I was like, well, how can I be a more honest person? <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I tell these lies for a, for good reason. Okay. Sometimes I tend to, I don't like answering phone calls. Especially small talk. So I have a tendency to, if I have to take a phone call, to just either say that, hello, hey, my phone's about to die, just so somebody will finally get it out. Like, say what you need to say to me, please. Can we not do the whole, the whole spiel? Um, so I'll either say like, hey, what's up, my phone is about to die, um, so what's up? <laughs> or, you know... Hey, um, I'm about to do this or I'm about to leave, you know, um, or I'm about to get in my car. What's up? I have um, a tendency to lie to get people to just say what needs to be said. And it sounds funny because, like, we do small talk here on the channel, right? Here and in the comments and stuff, but it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like inauthentic small talk. That's what I can't stand. Inauthentic small talk. Um, so yeah, anything to get me off the phone sooner, I will also do that. Oh, that's on here too. So I kind of do the same thing with something else. Um, it's funny because we were just me and like a friend group that I'm in on Snapchat. We were talking about how gangsters have like middle names. So it'll be like, um... You know, Sammy, the ice pick arugula or something. And I was like, you know, why don't we have middle names like that? We need middle names, so pick middle names. And mine is Natalie. Shut up talking to me. My last name. So my middle name is Natalie. Shut up talking to me. My last name. And that's essentially what this white lie is about. I saw a meme yesterday that cracked me up and it was like, don't come around me sighing because I'm not going to ask you what's wrong. You know, we're like four size in. It's different if you're like my friend, but if we're four size in and I already know that like, I don't want to open a can of worms with you, I'm just going to let you sigh. I am not going to ask you. I can't do it. Mostly with those people that created their own problems. Those are the ones that do it. Like, they're constantly starting and then mad that there's <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore I'll give people a few chances and I'm like this sounds like a you problem alright 
Okay, so I am guilty of saying I have plans and it's not a lie. It's not a lie. My plan, like this is a, a, a me thing. I have to go, I have to have a certain amount of time to do nothing. So that is my plan. So sometimes somebody will ask me something. Um, if I can do something, a favor or if, um, or just want to have fun with me, which is cool. But I know my limits. So I'll be like, I can't. I have plans. It's not a lie. Because, and it's sad that you have to feel like that's a lie. My plan is real. My plan is to go be in silence. Or my plan is to sit on my couch and watch my shows. Like, that is my plan. I like, can't do it. I have plans. Or um, I'll tell a little lie like, Oh, I gotta see if my husband works that day or something. Like, I'll lie like that. Even though in my head, I'm like, I know he doesn't work that day. But I will tell that lie. Now, what would be the honest way to handle that situation? Here's why we do it. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. And people have these weird feelings where if I'm like, you know what? No, I can't do it. I can't be with you in that time because I can't be around people in that time. That person will take that and turn, run with it and turn it into a million other things. So that is why the lie is necessary. Because the truth will start unnecessary drama. So it's like, look what you made me do. You made me lie to you. <laughs> um... insufferable clients or insufferable people in general but when I have to make a plan I have to make an appointment or it's somebody that I have to see about something other than like friendship you know and I will tell them so like let's just use the example of an insufferable client a client that I'm ready to never see again I'm guilty of telling them oh let me see what I got and then in my head, because for some reason I have like, I have a very sticky brain and a very slippery brain. But I can remember like over the years, oh, I know that person can't do Mondays. And I'll be like, well, it looks like all I have this month is t um, a Monday, at, you know, a time too that I know they work like a nine to five. So I'll be like at noon. Um... How could I handle that more honestly by quitting my job, which I'm doing? <laughs> you know, some people are, and I'm trying to get there. It's this stupid people pleasing thing. So some people in the industry will flat out tell, there goes my stomach. They will flat out tell a client, we're not a good fit. I cannot see you again. Why do I struggle with that? A, I know I need the money. Um, so sometimes it comes down to that. Like, I have to see her one more time because I need to make my money. Um, I always think, well, what if they go on and leave a bad review? Now, I know I've been a people pleaser because in a decade, I've only had one bad review. I've had a couple of people like be mad that they're not getting what they want. Like they can't like, I'll, or I'm charging them to come back in or something. And so they'll be like, this is on um, like this. I'm not doing this. Like, but, like a couple people over the years, like I'm not paying. I'm like, well, it was already laid out. Like every session costs a certain amount. You're not coming to me for free. I'm not paying for your shit. So what a couple of people that like, you know, they push their way around. Every, they're just a bully. They push their way around everything they can. But I've only had one, like, typed out bad review. And get this. Tangent. Um, it was because she, she had messaged me. She booked. I think it was right before I went on maternity leave when I was pregnant with Cruz. She booked her appointment. She missed her first appointment. No call, no show. Or maybe she called, but, like, last minute or something. I can't remember. And so I was like, okay, um, you know, I'll reschedule you one time. 
so I rescheduled her. Keep in mind, it takes two appointments to get your brows done. At first, the very first time, they're not done. They're halfway done. Like, you have to come back in. They have to shrink back up. They're going to be a little uneven because they're going to shrink it different. Anyways, it takes two sessions, period, your first time. Um, you know, some people are more done than others, but it, you need both those sessions. So she, she comes in and, and uh, probably sub, when did I, I had him at, oh yeah, I had him at the end of October and I worked that first week of October. So she came in right before maternity leave. She probably came in the first week of October. Now it says on there, you need an, about an eight week touch up. Now anything between six weeks and 12 weeks is fine, but ideally you're going for about eight weeks. It's not. It's not like, oh my god, eight weeks to the day you need to get in, right? So, our first appointment was in September, and then she missed it. So her second, like, her second attempt was early October. She made it in. I did her brows. And then I go on maternity leave. And my maternity leave was six weeks. So she messages, oh no, no, we made her appointment. We made her second appointment before she left. I don't remember when it was for her. But we made it before she left. She picked the time. I gave her some time. She picked it. Nothing was said. I like my brows. Here's when I'm coming. But, and mind you, she was late. She was late to that appointment. So then she messages me while I'm on maternity leave and says, I need to get in sooner. You know, they're not done. And I want them nice for the holidays. Maybe it was Thanksgiving. Maybe I can't remember. Maybe it was Christmas. But I was already back to work for Christmas. So I'm thinking it wasn't. Um, and I said, no, you're coming in, you know, I have you scheduled for X date and I don't have anything before then. I didn't mention maternity leave because that's none of her business. You made the appointment before you left. We're sticking with it. I'm not bumping you up. Your answer to can you get in, can you have something is just no. I don't live at work for you. We already agreed on something. So when I told her no, that she couldn't come in earlier, she left me a bad review. All it said was, she's not a professional. That is exactly what a professional is. Here is what I have. That's what I have. There's no emotion in this. You either stick to your scheduled appointment, and if the person doesn't have anything sooner, they just don't. So she actually tried to get her money back, and it's like half and half. Um, if if these credit card companies will give people their money back. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care about anything. It's just a half and a half. It's a roll of the dice. She didn't. Um, so I will tell insufferable clients. That was a long tangent. Sorry. I will tell insufferable clients like, oh, I only have Monday at noon. And just hope that they can't make it in. Um... I will tell the lie of saying I'm broke when it's just something I'm not interested in buying or something I'm feeling pressured to buy. I hate salesy things. I really do. I even hate that side of my job, which is why I don't do it, which is why I don't do well. <laughs> I don't ever upsell or I hate sales. Um, and when I'm starting to feel pressured somewhere about making a purchase, I will just be like, oh no, I'm broke. I don't even know, is that a lie? Like, I'm, I am broke. I'm always too broke to buy stuff that is just unnecessary. No matter, even if I'm doing well, I'm too broke to spend money on something that I don't need or, or really, really want. So I will just be like, oh no, I'm broke. No, thank you, you know? Um, or even if, even sometimes if like my friends want to do something and it costs money, I'll be like, no, I'm too broke for that. I don't really think it's a lie. I'm, I'm always going to be too broke to spend money on stuff that I don't, that I feel is like a waste to me, to my budget. And especially if I start feeling pressured, I'm going to be like, bro, I'm broke, bro. So you're barking up the wrong tree. Um... I will also claim to not know anything about a subject when I know it, like this person is going to 
just disagree with. Like, I can already tell they're on the other side. Like, politics, right? Um, if somebody right off the bat comes in talking some stuff that's not even, like, accurate, and I can tell that they get their news from some far, like, you know, here we have the spectrum. And I think I've went over this before, but you can pull these charts up on Google, but here's the spectrum, or here's the, the you know, non-partisan or whatever. Here's the 1440. If you need a news source, 1440 is literally just the headlines. You have to go do your own research after that. But here we have the middle. Hardly anything's on the middle, but if you're one way or the other, you're, you're going to find your news on one side of that or the other. If you're pulling your news from out here, I can't even talk to you. And I don't mean conspiracy. I think, I mean, like, you're really getting your whole news. Your entire brain is being siphoned from a news source that is like, been proven time and time again to be inaccurate and to not give you the full story. You have no balanced news in your brain whatsoever. We're not going to, I'm just going to be like, oh, really? And try to change the subject. I'm not going there. I'm just going to claim I know nothing about it. And it sucks because sometimes you'll get in these, like, you'll have a client in. You don't want to talk with them at all. Like, you can tell they're so far gone. And they're saying things that you know are false. Because you've done some research and you don't claim to know everything, but you know, like, what they're saying is pulled straight out of and it's so hard to not engage in that conversation I have before I've been like where did you hear that and they'll tell me something and I'm like go figure even with my mom I'm like did you source check that some of these people don't even know what source check means and that's scary there are people with college educations that don't understand what peer reviewed means how did you get through those classes how did you get through those grueling classes where you had to cite peer reviewed material where you had to source check how did you get through those I don't know did they just forget that all? Like, I forgot math? I don't know. So, yeah, I'll just be like, oh, I don't know nothing about that. I'm lying, I do. But I'm not going to get into it with this person. A good one on that is like, um, you know, people saying, oh, you can get an abortion at 10 months or 9 months. Like, what are you talking about? That's not, a, that, no, that would be birth or still birth. Like, that is not. Yes, technically you have to have things removed because something happened. But it's not by choice at 9 months. Like, it's not. Oh, kind of like when I said I would lie and say, oh, my phone's about to die. This one kind of is like that, but I will pretend I'm not home if somebody's knocking at my door. Lately, though, I've been pretty honest about not pretending I'm not home and just not answering the door. I still try to be polite and pretend I'm not home, but if I have to do something, I'm just going to go about my business. Nobody should be showing up to my home without texting me first. Calling me first. And if you're here to sell something, again, I'm broke. Okay? Why are you knocking? This is my home. Don't knock on it. <laughs> That's why we have phones and stuff these days. Like, make an appointment. So 
I can decide if I want to attend the appointment. If we, I can decide if I want that appointment. Nobody needs to be just knocking on my door. I'm in here looking rough and handling my crap. My toddler's probably running around half-dressed and the dogs will start going nuts. It's just a hot mess and I would like to avoid it. So I'll pretend I'm not home or I won't. But it's all technically pretending I'm not home is kind of a lie. So I put it on here. Um, last one. I think that this is pretty common. And I haven't had to do it in a long time because all my kids are, you know, all the big kids are grown, grown. But lying about my kids' ages to get, like, the, the kids' meals. You know? So I would try to keep them at that age for a couple extra years just to save some money like oh no he's 12 oh she's six and your kid will bust you out you have to have the talk every time like literally every don't assume they know even though you've been through it a million times yes we have to say this here you are six in here okay i don't care if you know mom's lying or not you don't have to say it i'll say it but you need to eat, <laughs> and we're going to say you're six to save a couple bucks. I don't feel guilty about that at all. All right, so those are some of the lies that I tell. Sorry if you think less of me now. I was honest about the lies that I tell. All right, if you are still there and you watch this all the way to the end, thank you very much. I hope that you have a good rest of your day. And I...